So we are in 10-4. We're actually going to do 10-4 and 10-5 today. You'll see why. Um, shouldn't be too long of a video either, so don't worry about it. Um, so we're going to talk about logs. So I'm going to skip over the first slide real quick, and I'm going to show you what a log is, what it really means, and then we'll come back to this first problem because I think that that will be easier for you. Um, so a log is right here, and this is an example of a log. You need to understand these words, um, so you definitely need to read through this. Uh, right here, if you have a log um, rhythm, logarithm, this is going to be uh, your exponent. This is going to your base, and this is what is called your argument. And what this really means is it's actually an exponent problem. Uh, what happens is here it becomes 2 to the third power equals 8. If you look at this right here, the 2 comes from right here. That's why it's called the base. It's the base number right here. This is called your exponent because it went to the exponents over here, and it's called the argument or answer. It's what 2 to the third power really equals. So they give you some more examples down here. And you should be able to go from exponential form back to logarithmic and from logarithmic back to exponential because next chapter we're actually going to be doing some math with these uh, problems. So this one right now we're just kind of under getting a basic laying a, a foundation for them. So like right here, if this is my answer, right, notice where the answer went. It went right there. The argument, right? This was the base and notice the base went right there. And the exponent went to right here. Um, and that, that's going to be the same for all of these problems. Um, and the reason I wanted to show you this first is I wanted to go back up now that we have that basic understanding of. That's going to be for every log. Um, we're going to go back up to the top. And they say, okay, what is the uh, consider the inverse of this guy? Yeah, so when you do the inverse... Think about inverse. Inverse means when you switch the x and the y. And so this problem really says y equals 2 to the x. So if I do the inverse, that would be x equals 2 to the y. And if I change this into log form, it becomes um, y equals log uh, 2 the x and so what you're able to see hopefully is you understand let me let me do something see if this helps you out let me write the original of the color um, y equals 2 to the x so this is this graph right here we said if i switch my x and my y this right here would be the graph of its inverse which is equivalent to this because we know how to take exponential form and to put to logarithmic. So when you go down here and they give you the answer, the inverse of 2 to the x is actually the logarithmic function. And if you think about that, that means I can take all of the x and y table for this guy. And if I switch my x and my y's, that will get me this function. And how do I know that this is a function? Because this guy right here, I know it's a function because it passes the, whole, uh, the vertical line test. But I know the inverse of this guy is going to be a function because it also passes the horizontal line test. So I know this, which is its inverse, is a function because of its original one being passing the horizontal line test. I know it's going to uh, be a function later on. Um, so the inverse of this guy is this logarithmic function. Again, that's because if you think about it, take that equation, the original one is y equals 2 to the x. When we do inverse, you switch the x and y. x equals 2 to the y. And we just learned how to take this and change it to logarithmic function. Um, and, and the logarithmic, and the logarithmic, it would be y equals log, same base, 2, x. Okay? And so we're going to teach you how to get those, actually put that in a calculator um, to find those answers. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about how you can do that. Uh, but 
again, if you take this right here, take the exponential form, this says if you take 2 and you put a negative 3 into the y, you are going to get a 1 eighth out. And again, how did they get that? They took y equals to the x. I'm doing 3. They took y equals to the x, which is x and y chart. I'll write for you right here. If you put in a negative 3, you get out a 1 eighth. If you put in a negative 2, you get out a 1 fourth. If you put in a 1 half, you would get out a negative 1. If you put a 1 in, you got a 0. If you put a 2 in, you got a 1. Um, sorry about that. My fault. Right here, I forgot. Should be, if I put in a negative 1, I get out a 1 half. If I put in a 0, I get out a 1. That makes more sense. If I put a 1 in, I get a 2 out. So I'm sorry. If you take this guy right here, if you put all these x's in to this guy, these are the y's you get out. Notice, if you take the inverse, which is in red, this is the inverse over here. When I switch the x and the y, okay, notice my x came here, my y became there. Notice what happened to my ordered pairs over here. Okay, the ordered pairs switch, and now instead of negative 3, 1 8, it's 1 8, negative 3. Instead of negative 2, 1 4, it's 1 4, negative 2. And that's because that's the inverse, and it is a logarithmic function. That's basically the, uh, a lot of the stuff that you need to understand. The big thing is understanding how to change logarithmic into um, exponent form, and then the inverse. So if I give you, uh, if I give you like, y equals 3 to the x, you should know the inverse of that would be um, x equals 3 to the y, which you should be able to change into logarithmic, which would be uh, y equals the log base 3x. Um, and so this, these guys, that would be its inverse. Um, The other thing, the other big thing from this chapter is, from this section, is you need to understand natural log and common log. And we've kind of already gone over that a little bit. Um, common log is very similar to, uh, remember, if you have the same thing with your restrictions. Your restrictions are going to switch for your x variable and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so... So if you think about these rules real quick, um, there's no restrictions on what you can put in for x. So that means that x can be any real number. Um, b has to be a number greater than 0 and bigger than, uh, but can't be equal to 1 because if anything to the 1 power is just going to be 1. So no matter, um, you know, 1 to the one to the negative 1 is still going to be 1. 1 to the 100th power is going to be 1 because you're just by 1. So can't be equal to 1. Uh, and your range, because remember, it, it's got to be uh, greater than zero, uh, because it's got that asymptote that the uh, exponential form has. All right, so uh, the other thing, here's how you can uh, sketch a graph of it. All you Look, they gave you uh, this guy right here. All they did is they switched the x and y, so this became b squared uh, and 2. This became B1. This became 1, 0. So all they did is they switched the X and Y. That they get. Uh, and then they write the inverse of it. Um, now this guy right here, this is what we need to know. Common log. If you don't see any number down here, it is understood to be a 10. Very similar to if you just see a square root sign. Really, this is called a radical. We call it a square root sign because if there's no number written here, it's understood to be a 2. Very similar to if it's just x, there's really a 1 beside it. We don't write it in there. We just write x because it's what's uh, understood to be there. If you see this problem right here, it is log base 10. So this answer would be uh, you are really taking 10 to the c of x, which is really y. So it would be 10 to the y power equals x uh, would be changing it into. Uh, so there's, if there's nothing there, it's called the common log, which we call 10. Uh, it is a very good uh, log to use, but we're going to use that a lot. Next chapter, common log is something we like.
Uh, it's actually what, when you hit log in a calculator, a calculator uses base 10 because uh, we don't have any of those fancy calculators that can change the base. Uh, so we'll talk about that when we get there in the next chapter, but common log. And then there's another thing called natural log, which is also in the calculator. If you have log E, remember that number E we talked about from last section, uh, really, you can write it. They actually change the log into this ln. ln just means that you are using a log function with a base e, that 2.7 whatever. Um, so those are the main things that you need to understand. Uh, they give you some graphs down here to kind of walk you through that. Um, talks about how this is the e 2.72. All right, analyzing some key characteristics, just talking about uh, the, you know, X and Y intercepts, the what the domain, the range, there's a vertical asymptote, uh, the function increases over the entire domain, means it's going up, the end behavior, all that kind of stuff that we've talked about and discussed. All right. I think we can talk about graphing calculator, we're fine. Um, Pause the video for a second. I'm going to go to the next section. All right, hopefully you're going to see why I'm going to do 10.4 and 10.5 together. Uh, I want to spend more time on other things, especially when we get to statistics before this EOC. So trying to, to move along. So 10.5, we have talked about transformations. We just did this in class today. So we're going to go over just a little bit, but not much. It's going to be the same as the stuff before, except now we're dealing with logs. Um, but all this stuff, remember, this is going to move. It, is it going to be a stretch or a compression? And that's going to be vertical. It's going to affect the Y. This guy right here is going to be moving it right or, I'm uh, sorry, up or down. And again, that's affecting the Y, up or down as far as how much to add. This goes up or down, but about how much to multiply by that Y. This affects the X. And remember, it's the one over that number. So it's like the uh, reciprocal of that. So if it was like uh, three halves is in there, it's one over three halves, which turns into one divided by three halves. We don't like to divide by that, so we multiply by its reciprocal. So really, it's just a reciprocal of that number. Two thirds is what you'd be multiplying the x by. And then this right here also affects the x. Remember, inside the parentheses affects the x. Outside parentheses affects only the y. And if it's multiplying, it multiplies by it. And then remember, just with the inside, it's got to do the opposite of what you think. So if it's a 2 right here, it's actually not going to multiply by 2. It's going to divide by 2 or multiply by half. We kind of talked about a lot of this. Ah, same thing's going to apply here. All right, first they talk about um, write the inverse. That's from last. Don't worry about that. All right, if you have the negative sign outside, if you have a negative sign outside, look and find that graph. This is my original. My original is right here, B. B is the guy that's not been touched. If you notice, when I do the negative outside, you literally took um, this guy right here, and it's flipped over the x-axis, okay? All right, the guy inside, so this is reflective over the x-axis, so where it reflects over y equals 0. So it flips it this way. Uh, this became here like this, and this part goes up there like that. So uh, it reflects it. Uh, it's like, remember, we talked about kind of if I folded this piece of paper right here, and this was wet marker, okay? This mark would now be over here, and this mark right here, which continues like that, would be up there. Uh, so that's kind of how I remember. I think of it, if you're assigning someone's uh, yearbook with a wet marker and you close the page, it kind of reflects it. Uh, folded it, that paper over it right here, if you folded that, this would reflect here, and that part would go like that. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, if I have a negative, um, if I have a negative inside, notice what happened is it's like this part is where I uh, flip it over, 
And so this wet part from the marker will go like that. And this part right here will go right there. Um, so notice that when I have this, it reflects over the y-axis. Uh, so here we go. This is another chart that you can fill this chart in. Again, right here it says, uh, if you have it outside, it reflects over the y equals zero. Y equals zero is really also known as the x-axis. And if I have here, it's really reflecting over where x equals zero, which is the y-axis. All right, so this one right here, we'll flip over this line. This one right here would flip over this line. And this one would do both. You'd reflect it over the x equals 0 and the y equals 0. All right. But then everything else is going to be the same stuff. Uh, so you have this. It's going to move it. Uh, you look right here at this. And the, the original function is right here. And if I count this, this point went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 backwards. That means it went left 5. How do I make it left 5? I add 5 inside the parentheses. Right here, this thing went, if I went from this order pair to this order pair, it went right 1 and up 2. So how do I go right 1? I actually subtract 1, up 2, plus 2. Same stuff that we've talked about. Um, and this one has a dilation factor because um, I take my uh, y's and I multiply them by 4. Uh, so the same stuff that we've talked about, uh, all they did is they took every one of these order pairs, and this is going to move it right to and down 6. So I don't think we have to go through much more of this section we've gone through. Notice if you move it up or down, uh, notice what also changed with it. The, the, X, the asymptote will change since this one right here, uh, the asymptote. So notice the asymptote for these guys is this. Um, when I was doing my asymptote yesterday, the other day for exponential, it had a horizontal. But when I do my inverse, notice my x becomes my y. So this uh, would change and become like this, which is why that asymptote happens right here. And when I move it, When I move it to the right two, notice not only did my points move, but my asymptote moved to the right two. When I go to this one, this one's asymptote is right here, the original, right? Well, when I move it up three, so I moved all my order pairs up three, and I had to uh, reflect it, notice my asymptote never changed. It was still x equals zero because I never went right or left. Um, and this is the same thing. You're just, this is going to be a uh, stretch of the, this is like, this is really like f to the 1 half x. And we've talked about how that's really going to be uh, multiplying everything by 2. So this order pair, which was, um, so my original chart for the uh, x and y is uh, 0, or I'm sorry, 1, 0. Uh, when I do that for my next one, my translation, I multiply my x by 2, so it's going to be 2, 0. And you see that order pair right here. Next one, order pair, would be uh, 4, 1. 4, 1, that point is right here. And when I translate it, I'm supposed to times this by 2, so it should be 8. And my y is still the same. If you look, 8, 1 is right there. Uh, so that's what we kind of talked about, the translation. So... I don't want to spend any more time on this. That's going to be it for this. All the same stuff, just doing it different ways, talking it through. Uh, we'll, we'll go over this tomorrow in class to make sure. Um, just a heads up, that means that the test is coming up because that's the end of this chapter. So the test will be, uh, we're going to have a review day and then we'll have the test. Uh, so we'll work on this tomorrow in class, a review day, and then we'll have the test. So get ready for that.